Well, hello everyone. Today we are looking at my new addition. As you can see there, it doesn't say 390 amp hours anymore. It does say 780 amp hours. Uh, that is because Powerwall version 2.0 is finished. Okay, and today we're going to discuss differences between the first power wall and the second power wall and the improvements that I think I have made so far. In a corner, there are batteries for power wall version 3. We'll see how that goes. I want to know what I learned from a power wall 2.0 and maybe apply those things that I learned from there to the Powerwall 3.0. I have learned a lot with the Powerwall version 1.0. So let's start. Here are both Powerwalls side by side. Each Powerwall can provide me with 19 kilowatt hours of stored electricity. So I can safely draw down 38 kilowatt hours from both power walls. All right, so let's start with the power wall number, power wall version 1.0 and see what I did with it. Just one more time for a short reminder. So from the power wall version 1.0, we do see that I have a monitor for uh, batteries, temperature monitor for the batteries and the fan control together with a USB outlet to charge batteries and phones and whatnot. We can see over here that I have these batteries way closer to the front of this case than I really wanted to. Uh, I do not have any bracing up on top for it, so the batteries cannot bounce around, and I do not have anything on the left or right side as a support for the battery so they don't tilt forward. There will be a different additions to the power wall that will go right here and that will be braced right on the front of the case that will hold batteries from tilting forward. They are already braced very well on the back side. So, in addition, I do have a bus bars, which I think were pretty much useless. And I don't know why I did it the first time, but hey, go ahead and, you know, mark that one as I'm not gonna do it again. The more connections you have in between your batteries and your inverters, you are introducing more voltage drops. So let's see what I did on the Powerwall version 2.0. So here is the Powerwall 2.0. It is much cleaner with a less clutter. I did not install anything into the doors. I think that is not necessary. That's what I learned from the Powerwall version 1.0. There's more room up front and the actual modules cells are more, are more pushed towards the back of the case. I made room for them. They're still braced. However, there's more room for me to work inside when I need to. So, Let's start over here. Actually, let's do it on this side because it's much more better visible. I have installed the support over here. So these last modules right here cannot tilt forward or move forward. These are plastic bars, uh, nylon bars, I think they're called, and they hold the batteries. Now I'm going to install bracing up front so the batteries cannot move forward and it will be installed on this part of the case. It will be braced up here. 
in addition I have installed this aluminum bar holding the top of the batteries and as you can see I have installed temperature control uh, you can see that in a previous video temperature control in the buck converter up on top of the case itself I have eliminated the bus bars as discussed which will introduce less voltage drops between here and the batteries okay now let's go on the top of the case on the top of the on the top of the case I did install this little voltmeter it serves two functions checks for voltage voltage says 57 volts right now however uh, it needs to be calibrated which I have not done so far and in addition to that it will give me the temperature inside the case uh, actually I put the temperature monitor on temperature probe on the um, BMS so it tells me the actual temperature of BMS I don't know how useful that will be but I think it will help in the long run monitoring all these different temperatures well let's compare that to Powerwall version 1.0 and Powerwall version 1.0 I do have this mon uh, I do have this uh, battery monitor up front I eliminated all of that because it will help with the battery at least I think so in the long run of course all of the connections are going into this distribution box I have video on that too and you can see how everything would be connected now I wonder what kind of a what kind of a lessons I'm going to learn from this edition that I can apply to the rest of the batteries over here I have actually purchased 100 batteries and they showed up on January 15th uh, the UPS not UPS FedEx guy hated me because it took him forever to unload it off of his truck 25 boxes get uh, get heavy real quick but I hope you like this there's a lot of energy storage here already and by the time this is finished they'll be close to uh, almost 1100 amp hours I believe so I hope you guys like it my HOA hearing is next week hopefully I will have all of this um, approved I mean solar panels installation of solar panels approved I think it's going in that direction and I'll talk to you guys soon I'll provide more updates and especially I will provide more updates on the batteries as I'm moving into next direction and that is installing the balancer for these power walls so we will talk about that solution too soon once I have re have everything ready on that side actually on power wall 1.0 I already have wiring installed for a balancer too I think it will be a nice addition and it will help out with overall performance of both of these power walls talk to you guys soon